Hello and welcome back to our lesson. Previously, we have learned how to use quick replies. On this video, we are going to learn how to save the values of our quick reply to the database using the custom variables. To use custom variables, we would need to use another element and that is the user input element. Don't worry, I'm going to show you step by step how to do exactly just that. So here, what we intend to do is we are going to save the email and the phone number to the database. Let's use user input. So to create a user input element, you can either use it by directly connecting just like this. Click the connection, drop it on the screen, and then use user input on the options. By doing that, the connection would be automatically redirected to the new element. Another method would be, example, if you have, uh, let's restore the connection to the previous element. You can right click anywhere on the screen, right click, and then the options would show up. Choose user input. As you can see, we have a new user input element here, and then we can establish a new connection here. Connect the email connection to the new user input element. And then in this case, the output of our user input will be connected to our thank you message or our text. So this text will serve as our thank you message. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's just rename this as email thank you. And then on this message, let's configure this. Thank you for providing your email and then the first name. So as you can see, there is an error configuration here. So let's configure our user input. So let's click here. Then we are going to create a new variable. So we can either use an existing variable, but we don't have one yet. So we need to create a new one. So enable the switch button and then let's name our custom variable. And then we are going to use the dynamic option. And for now, we are not going to use Google Sheet yet. We are just going to save it directly on our data. Database. So let's confirm the changes and then our custom variable would be automatically created for us. Let's do the same thing with the phone number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and then on the screen, we are going to add a user input element and connect the output node of our user input element to the text element here. I mean, let's rename this um, element. Great. So we need to configure the message here. Thank you for providing your phone number. And then let's use the first name. Okay, we we also need to configure our user input. Just click here. And then same thing as before, we are going to create a new variable. But as you can see here, we already have a customer email variable because we have created that earlier. So now we are going to use a variable specifically for the phone number. So let's create a new variable, enable this, and then we are going to name this variable as customer phone. Same thing, we are going to use dynamic, and then we are not going to use Google Sheet just yet. Let's confirm the changes. Okay, great. We now have created two user input, and each user input have their own custom variable. So what the custom variable does is it saves the value on the database, and if we want to retrieve that value, we are simply just going to call the custom variable again. So this is an example of calling the custom variable on our text message. Let's configure our text message again here. Then let's say your email address is and then on the custom variable, just click custom here. And on the drop down, you'd be able to see new values for the custom variables, which we just recently created. So let's say I'm going to show the user email of our subscriber. Okay, great. So this is the custom variable, which is going to be replaced with the email of our subscriber once this message is shown. The same thing we are going to do it on the phone number. Your phone number is and then we are going to click the custom variable button and then use the customer phone and add it here. So we now have used the customer phone custom variable. So let's confirm the changes and then let's hit save. All right, the flow has been saved. We can now send a test again. Click send test now. Great, we have just received the test message. Notice here that we now have the phone number available. Unlike the previous video where the phone number is not yet available. The reason is this specific user has added a phone number on their contact information. So this is the phone number that was added. So that's why this phone number is now publicly available and Facebook can now use that phone number on the messages. So again, remember, don't be surprised if the quick reply does not show the email or the phone number whenever you use the phone or email quick reply type. The reason is that specific subscriber did not provide the phone number or the email on their privacy settings. So let's try clicking the email 
to see what it would look like when we use the user input. So let's click the email. What it does is the email will be saved on our database. And as you can see here, your email address is this one. Okay. So whenever we use the custom variable, this email that the user has provided, which was saved in the database, will show up. Now let's try to trigger our test again. Send a test. Great. We have just received our test message. This time we are going to test the phone number quick reply. Let's click this. Great. So as you can see, this is the phone number reply that we have configured in our flow. And this is the phone number custom variable. So if we go back to our flow, this is the message that we received. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot. Let's recap what we have learned so far. We have learned how to use the quick reply and the user input. We have also learned how to use the custom variable and display it on our text message. In the next video, we are going to show how to save your user input data into Google Sheets. So stay tuned.